Welcome to the Pop on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is Body Blow. Body Blow. Uh, I am the Pope in question. My name is May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode four hundred and fifty-five, Bunny, and it, it, Bunny. Do you have a problem with your ticker? Because your heart's not in this podcast. You're a bum, Bunny. <laughs> You're a bum. We're just Meredith. Anyway, it, yes. we're not there yet. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. It's episode 455 of the podcast. Yes, yes, Little Lebowski Urban Achievers, and proud we are of all of that. It's summer! Yes, it is summertime once again, and you know what that means. Uh, it's time to hang up your summer stockings, put up your summer lights, put out your summer skeletons it's time to paint the eggs time to prepare for your annual pilgrimage to mecca and of course the true meaning of summer it's time to set bags of your own crap on fire ring the doorbell and run away yes and here here on the pope on film podcast that means one thing the return of our themed summers this is the sixth annual themed summer that we have done on this podcast, which is a mind blowing. To yes, me that we have been around for that long. You know, we've been doing this podcast since October of uh, 2014. Yes, which was uh, 20 years ago. So uh, this is the sixth themed summer we've done. We started with. The summer of Star Wars, which was surprisingly painful. Yes, yes, it was. Expecting it to be more fun, and I'm sorry, I like Solo. Yes, uh, I like it. Then we did the summer of Saw. I loved it. Funny, thought it was fine. Yes, but I loved it. Hey, I was thinking of Saw while watching Rocky from 1976. And Rocky II from 1979. Because remember when it took three years for a movie to come out? Yeah. But uh, for, you waited three years for a sequel, uh, unless on the rare chance that they filmed, you know, two movies back to back, like Back to the Future 2 and 3, or X and Pearl. But it, they, they were doing Saw movies one a year. Oh, yeah. That it was, was like the Halloween movie for many years. Yeah, yeah. So then, it, it, our our theme summers have always been about not doing the Fast and the Furious movies. Yes. Because I hate them. I think they're crap. I think that the Fast and the Furious movies and the Mission Impossible movies all fall within the same uh, category, which is, hey... Hey Britain, uh, but hey England, that's a nice uh, James Bond franchise you got going there. Can we make one? No. Well, fucking screw you. We're gonna make our own, <laughs> and it's gonna have cars in space that blow up. So, you know, that's what Mission Impossible is right now. I don't, I, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I saw the first Mission Impossible, and that's like a big fucking maybe, and I have not seen I saw the first one. any of them. Yeah, I saw the first one, never saw any of the other ones, period, at all, whatsoever. Buenas noches, coaches. I have so, tried, uh, I have tried the one with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, because I fucking love that guy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I tried, I but then, him. like, that's Tom Cruise, and I have to turn it off. Yeah, yeah. He's 61 years old. Just, yeah. Sorry, everyone. He's 61 years old. Uh, so, on our third summer, I was finally going to relent and do 
the Fast and the Furious. But then a blessing from disguise, Fred Willard died. Yes. Right before summer. So we transitioned at the last second to the summer of Fred Willard, and that was the best. And we saw these Oh, we got to do Teenage did. Mother that summer. Teenage a Mother, yeah. B-movie and classic. that uh, radio guy who was talking to aliens or something. Yes. Yeah, that was fun. We were watching uh, big popular things that he was in and the tiniest things that no one has ever seen. And we had the Fred Willometer, the Fred yes. Willometer, to show how much Fred Willard was in the film and how long you had to wait for Fred Willard to show up. Uh, Which, surprisingly, uh, was wagon. not long in most cases. Yeah. I can't do my work. I don't think so. The summer after that was our summer of bottoming, which I yes. thought was a cute name. That one, we uh, watched movies from IMDb's list, ever-changing list of the bottom 100 worst-reviewed movies of all time, which was kind of fun. Uh, then we took a... a, a uh, uh, we took a... What's the word? I don't want to say break. We took a hiatus for a while. And Bunny was really good. He was really nice. And he was like, hey, take your time. We can restart the podcast whenever you're ready. And I'm like, yes, I've been through so much. I just need some time uh, to myself. And oh, my God, I got the greatest idea for a summer. Yeah. <laughs> so we did the summer of COVID exploitation, which is COVID exploitation films. And that was shit. That was hard. But uh, we got the jump on the story of Joshua Wesley. Yes, yes, we did. Since, since last summer, the name Joshua Wesley, the youth pastor, has become sort of a like a like a, a famous thing. And it's like, oh my goodness, youth pastor marrying this younger. Oh my goodness! And did you know that he made a movie? Yeah, we saw it. It sucked. Yes, in a kind of hilarious way. Oh, God, yes. Yeah. In a very much the room, this should not be as funny as it is way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, this year, we're doing the Summer of Yo, where we are trying, trying to count all of the yo's in the Rocky franchise, which is harder than I thought. It is difficult to understand what people are saying sometimes. Yes. But I got and numbers. Also, and also, I find myself uh, getting into the movie and forgetting to count the yo's. Yes. So that was difficult. Uh, but I, and sometimes be- it's like, oh, was that a yo? Exactly. I'm not sure if that I was a hardest- yo. Well, technically, yeah. that was a yo yo. Fuck it, I'm counting it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I got really into Rocky too, and I didn't count that many. Rocky one had a lot. Rocky two didn't have that many, but we'll get to that in the back half of the podcast. Yes. And speaking of bottoming, uh, we've got a uh, the Pope on Film Facebook group. We post a lot of in articles, and it's really funny. I am serious about making a Turkish recep Eva Deke. Because if Turkish, if the Turkish country is just going to take our movies, our American yes. movies, and redo them in a crappy way, then we should make American Recep Eva Deke. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It would be Hello, only fair. Hello, I'm an American known as Recep Eva Deke, and I'm going to get into wacky adventures, and then we play some music from Game of Thrones or something. Yeah. Splice in the boulder scene from Indiana Jones for no reason. Uh, Recep Ivadik is a, a Turkish uh, comedy movie franchise that we almost watched for our summer of bottoming, but didn't, but found that uh, we have a lot of Turkish fans who like it when we mention yes. Recep Ivadik. But but I am thinking now, all of a sudden, and as the drugs are starting to creep in... Uh, Sweet. Me too. I, I, I think you may be too late on that idea, because like, isn't that the machine 
Isn't that uh, exactly what? what the fuck that, that is? is? Kind of. That, that is, is trying, Reset I think that's it. I'm not sure what that movie is about. It's a bit confusing to me. Uh, it's hey, about an out of shape guy who thinks he's tough, I think. Something like that. Yeah. And it's a comedy, but we're supposed to laugh at that. Well, it's starring Burt Kirshner, and uh, the movie Old School is based on him. Really? Yeah. He was like this insane legend in college and he was like this he would would drink everybody under the table and he would party and so they decided to make a movie about him and 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 they made the movie or was it van wilder anyway some famous movie was based on him but they changed it just enough so that they never have to pay bert kirshner so i'm happy that he's starring in this movie i i won't see it but i'm happy <laughs> he's starring in the movie Good for him. He deserves some of that dollars, you know. And, and uh, since we're and... on, since we're on that kind of vein, I don't know if I've said this out loud on the show, and I, I did say it to Jeannie once, and she was kind of surprised. But I'm looking forward to the Barbie movie. The Barbie movie looks fucking wonderful. It looks stupid. It looks it dumb, looks, it and looks I'm going stupid. to see it at least. Three times in theaters. It look. It definitely looks stupid, but it also. In everything going on in movies right now, whether it's comic book movies or it looks fresh, is what it yeah. looks. It looks like okay. Looks different. Here's something they were that we're not seeing all the fucking time. Yeah, I'm down with that. I'm I, I I'm excited to see it. I'm absolutely excited and, to see it. And and it's got good people behind it. Not that that's a fucking guarantee it. of anything, but at least it's got a shot of being a good movie. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. It's one of my it's one of the big things that, that I've been looking forward to this summer. I, I, I don't I don't know what I want out of this movie. Like like I have no I really have no concept of what you're really gonna do with Barbie. Okay. But what I know is that I would really want to put it on the DVD D shelf next to Barb and Star. That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I would, other than I would that, like I to have put no it, expectation, but I would like to put Barbie right next to Inception. Yeah, Inception, Inception Barbie, or like Matrix, somewhere in the Matrix movies. I'm excited for this film. It's going to be good. Yeah. Anywho, welcome to the monologue. Now shorter diet monologue, as it were. And now in the monologue, I pick one news story to discuss for a little bit. I was going to talk about how orca whales are unionizing together to sink boats in the ocean, which is freaking awesome. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh, hashtag orca. I'm team orca in yeah. this situation. Uh, but, but instead, I want to talk a little bit about legal matters, the law, the man. Okay. Because I uncovered a story from 2019 that I am deeply passionate about. Uh, ben, I, I, I want to Ben Schneiber. Ben Schneiber, Iowa. Okay, I found it. Good, 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 good. Okay, so this is a story that I found from 2019 that sort of blew my mind and I'm deeply passionate about this. So uh, there's an inmate in Iowa Penitentiary his name is Ben Schreiber. He was convicted in 1997 
of beating a man to death. And okay, yeah, that's bad. Yeah. We're not saying that. It is a bad crime that he did, and he should be in jail. Okay. Well, um, he's been in jail since then, and he's older, and he's he's gotten sick, and, uh, you know, he's got health problems, let's just say. It, it doesn't matter what. But he was taken out of uh, Iowa Penitentiary and taken to an emergency room. And while he was there, uh, he had these kidney stones. He had kidney stones that triggered septic poisoning. And he was found unconscious in his uh, uh, cell. And he was taken to the uh, emergency room in March 2015. And his heart stopped five times. Okay. In the last time, they thought he was going to uh, really die, uh, but they shot him with some what adrenaline. They did the shocky shocky clears, you yeah. know, the shocky shocky clears, and that was an awesome song. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. I I think that was the Kinks. Uh, so they did the shocky shocky clears, and then he came back to life. And so the Iowa penitentiary said, oh, good, he's back to life. Here, go back in your cell. But Ben Schreiber said, uh, no, you have to free me. I'm serving a life sentence, and I died. Oh. Set me free. I am done. With my life sentence, and so of course, oh, and of course the prison I, and the guards they're like, "Fuck no, we're gonna keep you in here." And he he went to court and he was denied and he appealed. It went all the way to the Iowa Supreme Court, and the Iowa Supreme Court said, "Look, Mister Schreiber, if you're alive, you're in jail. If you're dead, I'm not." talking to you right now so go back to jail but i've gotta say you gotta give him this one i i i know i i i i've got to agree i've totally got to agree i mean this is obviously a loophole that no one has ever thought of before kudos to you for figuring out the loophole let him go and then Put that in the law so that it doesn't happen again. But you, I think you should should let the man go. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. The man died. That is the end of your life sentence. I one hundred percent agree with this man. Yes, he beat someone. To un, death. Un, yes, unless, unless it's one of those cases where you have consecutive life life sentences, but you still get one marked off. Yes, exactly. He died, and and here's the thing: his heart stopped five times. So if he has five life sentences, boom, he's out. Yeah. You know, if he has six life sentences, ah, dropped, just under the wire. But yeah. I think you need to give him this one. A and I, I'm. I, very passionate about this. I'm surprisingly passionate about this. <laughs> you should let this man go. He died. You yeah. know? It's just, he, he, I got to give it to him. Any, oh, and uh, it, he also. He fulfilled his sentence. Yeah. And also, so that's our story for the monologue this week. Also. <clears throat> I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I'm a performer at Pride, baby! Yes, you are. So, this is how it happened. Uh, I was at home, and it was late at night, and I was a little bit high, and I was going through Facebook, and someone posted that they're having open auditions to uh, be a part of Oklahoma City's big Pride Festival that happens in Scissor Tail Park in downtown Oklahoma City. 
hey, you know, and, and I said, oh, man, I'd love to audition. But what what would I audition with? You know, I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. I'm not burlesque. I'm not a drag queen. I can't lip sync to anything. I mean, what would I even do? Uh, a story time? Huh. Well, fuck it. I'm going to uh, fill out these uh, submission forms and applications now while I'm high, because if I'm not high, I might yeah. chicken out. So I'm going to do this while I'm while I'm high so I can't take it back when I'm sober. And, and so I got an audition, and I was nervous as hell, but I did it, and I'm like, man, I did it. Great. All right, let's go home. It, I didn't expect to be chosen, but I was. And then the surprising part was that I, when I saw that I was chosen and it says uh, you'll be performing from 1 to one thirty at the Love's Travel Stop stage. And I'm like, oh, wow, I'm going to be on the stage. But then I have a rap artist friend. His name is Zan the Artist. X-A-N, the artist, all one word. He's on Spotify. He has a song called Euphoric, which is, oh, I fucking love it. But uh, he got chosen as well. A trans, young trans rap artist. His music is amazing. You should absolutely check him out. And Zan, the artist, got chosen too. And I was like, oh, cool. We're both going to be performing at Pride. But his says that he'll be performing on the Pride stage. And it's and so then I thought yeah. to myself, oh, well, I'm not like a musical artist. I'm not like a singer or yeah. a band. This is so, so he's probably performing on the main stage and they probably have me on some secondary stage off in the corner over by, I don't know, the, the Dunkin' Donuts booth. Yeah. Dunkin' Donuts supports Pride until uh, angry white people threaten to blow up our store, in which case, fuck you gays. But until then, we love gays. Yeah. So I'm, oh, I'm so weird. They probably tuck me off to the side. But then I found an article about Pride Month in Oklahoma, and uh, the, the people who do the Pride Fest at the end of the month in Oklahoma City they said, our theme this year is uh, uh, queer pride, uh, the reckoning something too fast, too furious. I don't know. But um, this year we will be focusing on trans stories by trans artists with a specific focus of helping trans people find their voice and find allyship in the community and uh, adversity and unity, blah, blah, blah. And when I went to audition, here's a dance troupe and here's a dancer and here's a singer and here's a guitarist and here's a singer and here's a dancer. And here's a burlesque performer. Here's a drag queen. Here's another drag queen. Then I'm talking for like eight minutes. And I'm like, well, at least I'll be different. I'm the only person who was just talking and apparently that's what sealed the deal because I was a trans person with a story and my story was my transition. And so I'm on the main freaking stage. Congratulations. Uh, there's going to be like a hundred people there. Hundreds of people there. Hun maybe thousands of people because the parade is happening that day and it's happening at 11 and the parade will be ending right there at the stage when I will be going off. So there yeah. could be thousands of people there. And I'm trying not to think about it. One thing that you have said to me repeatedly, Bunny, and my wife said to me repeatedly, is that I get nervous and I get scared and I freak the fuck out and I have a hard time sleeping and a hard time eating. But when I am on the stage, I just turn on. Yeah. And I'm hoping it happens Again, but on a much bigger scale. And I'm nervous well, as hell, but well, I'm going to so, do this. So maybe just, I, I mean, you got time, you know? So like, Yeah, I got time. Be nervous for a while. Maybe you get yeah. that out of your system. I will. Don't I be nervous say, the whole time, but like, 
maybe take some time to be nervous. Maybe that's I gotta something say, that you buddy, need to feel for Doing the Rocky reason. movies helps. Yeah. Because I do 100% feel like tying it all together in a nice little bow. I do feel like freaking Rocky Balboa in that first movie where it's like, I'm a nobody living in a small town. There was just a <laughs> deadly shooting next door. I am super broke. Nobody knows who I am. And I get this accidental one in a million shot. Yeah. And 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 here I go. I'm gonna go for it. I'm not gonna run upstairs, but I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> Maybe to some Bill Conti music. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, the there eggs. you go. You know, be performing at Pride. Cook the eggs. Yeah. Yeah. No. No way. I. Ugh, ah, yeah. Ah. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I might catch a chicken, though. Yeah, I might catch a chicken. I know, I know a guy who has some chickens, yeah. so I might do that. Keep myself I'd, speedy. I'd be down with playing with some turtles. Yeah, you know, right? Sylvester Stallone allegedly still has the turtles from this movie, but we'll get to that. Uh, so that's it for my half of the monologue. Before we end, wrap it up. I'm tossing it over to you, Bonnie. You wanted to mention something to to rant? Mm, 